Being able to tell whether text was generated with AI is becoming more and more important. AI has generated millions of words for millions of people, and soon those numbers are going to be in the billions. And there's tons of use cases. AI is being used to generate all sorts of stuff. People are using it to write blogs. People are using it to write internal reports within companies. People are probably sending you marketing emails written by AI. Students are using it to write essays and do their homework. And even teachers are using it to prepare lesson plans and write tests and quizzes. So it's all over the place. So the question is, how can we detect it? Or even can we detect it? And the answer is yes. Luckily, there's a couple ways to detect it. So the way these, this uh, AI technology works, large language models, is through something called next token prediction. It's basically a super, super, super smart autocomplete, right? It's trying to think of the next most likely word, then the next most likely clump of words, and then the next most likely sentence and paragraph, and on and on and on. And it's making these predictions using tons and tons of really smart math. However, this is a super important insight. It's picking the most likely word or words. And there are two ways that are to really identify AI-generated text. And they're called perplexity and burstiness. And we'll talk about each one. Perplexity is the how random or unpredictable a word is, the choice of a word. So let's just take a really simple example where you would say, he ate the blank. Now, a word like apple or cake would be very likely. A word like glass of water would be less likely. How often do you hear someone say he ate the glass of water? And then a word like car would be extremely unlikely. And then you start to get into weird cases like he ate the car-shaped cake, right? Uh, and really, AI is always going to pick the most likely words. And indeed, if you actually look at how these generations are done, you'll see that whenever it's generated a sentence, it's looking at the full possibility of words and it's giving uh, likelihood scores or probability scores to all of them. Now, it doesn't always choose the most likely word. It just chooses ones in the higher end of the distribution. Like a, a really fun experiment to do actually is run the same prompt a hundred times and you will not get the same result. You'll get different results, but you'll get a, a lot of results that kind of converge around a couple different probabilities, a couple different words, and you'll start to see some patterns and you'll really start to see, um, you'll start to develop a better sense of what is likely and unlikely in the AI's mind. And again, this AI has been trained on tons and tons and tons of text. So it's really just predicting the most likely word uh, based on all the text it's written. Now humans will often pick unlikely words. And indeed a hallmark of good human writing is when a writer chooses uh, a word that you wouldn't have thought to have chosen, right? An unlikely word, but that still makes sense. You can really tell that they're thinking from first principles and writing from first principles. Now, the second way to identify AI text is burstiness. Burstiness is related to perplexity. It's just the next level. Burstiness is how random a sentence structure is, a sentence length is, a sentence type is. When you see a lot of AI generated text, it really tends to be very verbose and very even handed. The sentences are all kind of the same length, have kind of the same tone, are kind of the same type. Whereas a uh, paragraph written by a human, often it has a sentence that is 20 words long, followed by a sentence that is three words long or two words long. It's like, no way. And then it goes on to the explanation. So human writing tends to spike up and down more. It's not as even handed. You're less likely to have a paragraph that is three 20 word sentences and more likely to have a paragraph that's three 20 word sentences and uh, one five word sentence and one three word sentence. Humans tend to be much more bursty in this. So hopefully that was helpful, but it might have been a little abstract. So now let's take a look at a couple examples. And we're going to look at our uh, is AI generated text that scores very low on perplexity and burstiness, so that doesn't have the sort of randomness that we're talking about. And then we're going to look at the same passage passed through an AI prompt that's specifically instructed to address those things, to make it more random, uh, have more perplexity, more burstiness, that so would score higher on these ratings. So first we're going to look at this um, journal entry about a pizza chef. Dear journal, today was another frustrating day at the pizzeria. Despite my best efforts in the kitchen, our restaurant continues to receive terrible Yelp reviews, all pointing to one common complaint, the lingering smell. It's disheartening to read customers' negative experiences, unaware that the culprit behind the odor is none other than me 
blah, 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 blah. Now this has a lot of hallmarks of AI generated text. It's, it's just all very predictable, all very generic. So now let's take a look at the converted version and I think we'll instantly see some differences. Another rough day at the pizzeria, period. So already we have a very short sentence here and it's very casual too. There's actually not even a verb in the sentence. No matter how much sweat I pour into the oven, our diner is still getting clobbered by terrible Yelp reviews. So again, this like to me, this word choice clobbered is distinctly not very uh, AIE. Like here it says our restaurant continues to receive terrible Yelp reviews. And here our diner is still getting clobbered by terrible Yelp reviews. So it's much more uh, evocative and it's not exactly the word you would predict. Like continue to receive is a much more likely phrase to encounter than getting clobbered by terrible, uh, terrible Yelp reviews. They all hammer the same nail, the, the same nail, that dang smell. It's a kick in the gut reading those comments, clueless about the stink's real origin. Yours truly, douse myself in different deodorants. So here, uh, yours truly, this again is like a little, um, this is like a little word clump that is not very likely. To me, it's like very much not AI uh, or not indicative of AI, this yours truly. So now let's look at another one. Here's an AI generated Yelp review. Um, and I'm already bored actually. I recently had the misfortune of dining at this pizzeria. And let me tell you, it was an olfactory nightmare. The moment I walked through the door, a pungent stench assaulted my senses, which I initially attributed to the kitchen. However, as I glanced around, blah, blah, blah. So here it's, it, it, it's just very generic and very even handed. So let, let's read the next version. Stumbled into this pie joint lately, got nothing but the strangest whiff. Nearly floored me the second that door opened. Foul tang mistook for kitchen mojo gone wrong, but then gazed kitchen ward hungrily, and oh, horror of horrors. Source was the undisputed perfumer, looking every inch a smell pit. Uh, so whether this is actually better than the original, totally up for debate. But what isn't is that this is much <laughs> more different than the original, right? It's, it, it's much more casual. Stumbled into this pie joint lately nearly floored me on the second on the, uh, the second the door opened. Uh, it, it has a lot more perplexity, a lot more like strange word choices, a lot more burstiness, a lot more strange uh, sentence constructions. And finally, let's read one more. This is a LinkedIn post for our chef friend who's now looking for a job. Uh, passionate pizza enthusiast and seasoned chef seeking new opportunities after the closure of my previous restaurant. With expertise in crafting mouth-watering pizzas, I bring a wealth of culinary skills to the table. So this is very generic. It has all the type of uh, words and constructions that you would expect in a sort of like professional resume-y, job-y, cover letter-y post, right? Uh, it feels like a million other things we've read. So now here's a version that has more perplexity and burstiness. Passionate about pizza and decorated with a chef's hat, I'm throwing my apron back in the ring after my venture tossed its final dough. Food, pizza isn't just food, it's an art, one that informs my skill set, skill set profoundly. When adversity knocked at my old eatery doors, I clung tight to what mattered, food's soulful essence. So here we see it uh, again, the perplexity and burstiness of the writing is uh, much more flavorful. It's pushed up a lot. So hopefully those are some helpful tips on how to tell whether text was generated with AI and some strategies we can take to sort of transform our own text, our own writing to make sure it uh, scans less to a human reader as AI generated. And my name is Mike. I work at Pickaxe, a no-code chatbot builder. And for more information about how to tell whether text was generated with AI and more strategies you can use, check out the blog post, which I linked in the description. And for more videos about uh, the no-code AI space, give us a follow.